The Middle East Institute at Georgia State University presents Arabic Grammar Unpacked. In this video, we will be discussing what's called the Mudar Majzum, or Present Jussif. This is the third of the three forms of the present tense. In the middle chapters of Al-Kitab, we're introduced to the particle Lem, which means didn't. So in this case, we have Khalid Lem Yadkhul Fi Kulayat Al-Adab. Khalid did not enter the school of literature. This is a little perplexing for intermediate students because we're using a form of the present tense. Yadkhul means he enters, not he entered. And in this case, what we're doing is we're using the particle lem to negate the past tense. But one thing you'll notice here is that over the lem in Yadkhul, we have sukun rather than the dhamma of the first version of the present tense, the mudara marfu, or the fatha of the second version of the present tense, the mudara mansub. In this case, we have sukun, which marks it as the mudara majzum, the third of the three forms of the present tense. We can say, lam ahtor asaf li anni kuntu maridan. I did not attend class because I was sick. In this case, again, we're using the present tense, but we're putting the particle lam before it in order to negate the past tense. And again, the sukun here marks it off as the mudara majzum rather than either of the other two forms of the present tense. I can ask, li madha lam tafhami hadhil jumla? Why didn't you understand this sentence? And in this case, we have the long vowel e at the end of tafhami, which means that we're speaking to a woman. In the mudara marfu, this would be tafhamin, but in the mansub and the majzum, this is just long vowel ya. Yeah. I can say Zohra lem tu safir ila ars uchtiha. Zohra did not travel to her sister's wedding. Again, the sukun over the ra marks it off as the muldara majzum. So in each case, what we're doing here is using a special form of the present tense along with the particle lem to negate the past tense. There are, of course, five forms of a verb. Amila, the past tense. Ya'malu, the present tense. Here, just as a matter of practice, we render it in the Muldara Marful, the main version of the present tense. Al-amal, the act of working. Amil, a worker. Ma'mul, something that has been worked. The first one is, of course, called al-maldi, the past or perfect, that is complete tense. The second one, al-muldara, a grammatical term, the imperfect or present tense. The third one, al-mastar, the gerund or verbal noun, the act of performing that action. The fourth one, ism al-fa'il, the active participle, the doer of that action. And the fifth one, ism al-maf'ul, the passive participle or the done to of that action, something that has been worked. In this video, we'll be concentrating on the muldare, the present tense. But unlike the last two videos where we looked at the muldare marful, the first version, the present indicative, or the muldara mansub, the second version, the present subjunctive. In this video, we'll be looking at al muldara al majzum, the third version, which in English is called jussive, which is just a grammatical term. In Arabic, majzum means cut off or severed, and is meant to refer to the sukun at the end of the, some of the forms of the verb. Conjugating the majzum isn't that different from conjugating the muldara mansub. There are only a few subtle differences. Here, on the side, I've written it with lem ya'mel, so that we can remember that this is what we use after lem. When we use the ana form, we say ana a'mel, not a'melu or a'mela, but rather just a'mel, with a sukun at the end. Of course, in colloquial speech, all three of them will be pronounced exactly the same. But here, the sukun is what marks it off as being the mudara majzum. Same thing with the enta form, ta'mel. The enti form, ta'mali, looks exactly like the mudara mansub, the subjunctive form. There's no difference between them, and there's no way to tell, other than the particles that precede or follow it, which one we're using. Huwa ya'mel, hiya ta'mel, again with sukun rather than dhamma or fatha. The dual forms all look exactly the same as they do in the mudara mansub. They lose their noons and just have alif as their suffix, and in this case we have the lem alif character because the verb amila ends with lem. The nahnu form, like the other short ones, is na'mel, ending with sukun rather than with dhamma or fatha. The antum form loses its noon and is replaced with silent alif, just like in the mansub. 
the female human plural you form doesn't change in any of the three forms of the present tense. The hum form, the human plural they, loses its noon and is replaced by silent alif, again exactly as in the monsub. And the hunna, the human plural female they, doesn't change in any of the three forms of the present tense. So just to recap, the ana, anta, hua, hia, and nahnu forms all have their dhamma or fatha replaced by sukun. The anti, antum, and hum forms all lose their noons, and in the case of the last two, have them replaced by silent alif, because we can't end a conjugation with a long vowel wow, because the Quran doesn't do it. The dual forms lose their noon, and the human female plural forms don't change in any of the three versions of the present tense. So you can take a screenshot here, and you can save this table for your files, or print it out and put it in your notebook. Or, if you'd like, you can look at this version, where the dual and human female plural forms are grayed out, because they aren't really used in Alkitab. And you can save this and take, put it beside the other files and have them as a reference. Now, using the Majzum really isn't very difficult. You just have to remember when to use it. And by far, the most common usage is after the particle Lem, which, as we've stated before, negates the past tense, even though we're going to use a present tense conjugation of the verb. So, Khalid Lem Yadkhul Fi Kulayat Al-Adab means Khalid did not enter the school of literatures. If we got rid of the lem and replaced the last sukun in yadkhul with a dhamma, then it would mean khalid enters. But in this case, because of lem, we're negating the past tense, even though we're using a version of the present tense to do it. Again, lem ahtor asaf li anni kuntu moridan. I did not attend class because I was sick. We could say this another way, just as with anything we use with lem. I could say, ma hadartu asaf li anni kuntu moridan. Here, I've used the regular past tense and negated it with ma, as we're supposed to do. So there's absolutely no difference in meaning between lem ahtor and ma hadartu. They both mean the same thing. I did not attend. However, there is a difference in nuance. The first one, using lem, is significantly more formal sounding than the second one. Most native speakers, at least educated native speakers, would, in using writing in a written text, would use lem ahtor, but in speech would use ma hadartu. The difference is one of formality. Lem ahtor is significantly more formal than ma hadartu, although as far as meaning goes, they're completely interchangeable. If we want to ask a question, we can say, Alam tadrusu fil maktaba laylat ems? This is asking a negative question. Didn't you all study in the library last night? When we have lem and we put it together with hal, it becomes alam, like this. So watch out for this one because the characters alif bihamza lem meme can also mean pain as well. So be careful when you're using this one. Alam is didn't you? We also need to watch out for the tricky words ma lem. We're used to thinking of ma as negating the past tense, and it seems a little odd to have it here because ma lem, well, doesn't lem negate the past tense? But ma lem together is idiomatic. It means unless. So in this sentence, we have len tanjaha ma lem tedros kathiran. You will not succeed unless you study a lot. There's nothing in ma lem to indicate that it means something like unless in English. It's simply idiomatic, but it's very common. So it's something that you probably ought to pay attention to from the start. Notice in this sentence, after len, we have tanjaha, that's the mudara monsub, because it comes after len, but ma lem tedros bisukun, because it comes after lem. So in this sentence, you have two different versions of the present tense. The first one is monsub, the second one is majzum. This is quite common in Arabic sentences. It's quite common to have sentences with muldara marfu and muldara mansub in the same sentence as well. You simply have to pay attention to when to use which one. This is difficult for native speakers of English because we simply don't have anything like this in English. Another sentence, satash'arina biljaw ma lam takkuli. Here, we're talking to a woman, satash arena, you will feel, biljau hunger, malem takkuli, unless you eat. So in the first verb in this sentence, it's muldarat marfu, because it's the future tense. And the second verb in the sentence is muldarat majzum, because it comes after lem. 
So be aware of ma lem, which means unless, and is a great addition to your vocabulary. One other thing we can use the muldara majzum for is to make commands. In this case, we're going to talk about the negative command, the prohibition, telling somebody not to do something. So here we've got this sentence, Ya Mahmud, la tedheb ila dalik al matam. Hey, Mahmud, don't go to that restaurant. So this is not the regular present tense, but rather the majzum, you can see from the sukun. So la tethab is telling him not to go, not talking about him or talking to him. You're ordering him or giving him a command, hence the exclamation point at the end of the sentence. If we were talking to a group of people, we would simply use the appropriate version of the majzum. So ya shibeb la tethabu ila dalik al matam. Hey guys, don't go to that restaurant. This is a plural command, so it needs a plural suffix, which is another thing that it's difficult for English speakers to remember to do. If we were talking to a woman, we would use the appropriate suffix as well. Ya Zuhra la tadhabi ila dalik al matam. Hey Zahra, don't go to that restaurant. And again, here we've used the appropriate suffix. But if we were talking about Zahra, and we were saying Zahra la tadhabu ila dalik al matam, that's not a command. That's simply a statement. And we can tell because we're, first of all, we're talking about her, not to her. And secondly, it's in the Muldara Marfu, the regular present tense, as we can see from the Dhamma, not the Majzum. So in an unvoweled text, it would be very easy to mistake a negative statement for a negative command. We can also use the Muldara Majzum to make the affirmative command to tell somebody to do something, but this requires an extra step, and hence it will be the subject of a different video. So the Muldara Majzum, the third form of the present tense, uses sukun in the short forms, and in the longer forms looks exactly like the muldara mansub. We use it after lem to negate the past tense, even though we use the present tense. We use it after ma lem to make unless. We use it after la to make the negative command or prohibition. We'll also use it for positive commands as well, but that will be the subject of a different video.